Okay, in this lesson I'm going to speak to optimizing our images for our page. Now, there are strong opinions out there that a page shouldn't be any more in than 50 kilobytes uh, for loading in terms of file size overall. Some people would, would say that, okay, 100 kilobytes is good. In truth, in my mind, the balance becomes your audience's general speed connections as well as balancing the overall content and image size of your page opposed to the design of the page. You don't want to compromise your images so much that your page looks horrible or that you've had to cut off chunks of information. So it's a balancing act. In this particular case, I'm not going to focus so much on um, overall file size, but rather how can I take some of this uh, stuff and optimize it to the best that I can to make things look better overall. So I have, in preparation for today, gone ahead and downloaded a couple of different images. Um, one of these is a school bus from wikimedia.org. Uh, and if I go back here, you can see that this image is originally 3,000 pixels wide, 2,300 tall. It's 1.4 megabytes in size. It's huge. Not only in terms of overall display size, 3,000 is way larger than I would want on my web page. And 1.4 megabytes is uh, way too big of a file size. In addition to that, I've grabbed a flask, a picture of a flask from um, school.discoverychannel.com. And finally, I've grabbed a another image from wikimedia.org. Um, this one is a basketball while file size um, dimensions 340 by 340 is not terrible. It's still probably larger than I need it to be on my page. 154 kilobytes is a little bit larger than I feel comfortable with as well. So I'm going to work on, on inserting those images and wrapping them down or compressing them down. Now the first thing I want you to know is I've got this page wrapper going here and this page wrapper is 800 pixels wide. And I've chosen 800 because I have found that most of my audience can comfortably look at an 800 uh, page wide um, piece so that I know that most of my audience is going to be okay with this. There again are some different arguments that say you should go smaller. Some people say don't worry about it, go larger. For my purposes, I feel comfortable with 800. I'm going to go ahead and click on insert get right down to the heart of this. I'm going to click on image. I'm going to click on the school bus and I can see indeed it is still very large, very wide, particularly knowing that my overall page size that I want my content to appear in is only 800. This particular image of 3000 wide is huge in, in addition to the fact that it's coming in at 1.4 meg. So I'm going to click OK and as always I want to uh, do the correct thing in terms of putting in an alternate text piece here. And I'm going to click OK. Now I can see immediately that it has actually busted out of my div tag. See, it's even, it's run way over that div tag. I knew that that would happen because I knew before I inserted it that this image was really large. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and shrink this image down to a, pay, a size that I can live with, not only in terms of um, file size, but dimensions. And that's what I'm really working on towards th this end. I'm just physically shrinking it up to a dimension that I think is appropriate for my content. I'm going to go here to about this, maybe even a little bit smaller. Okay, I'm going to go to that. Now again, on your monitor in this screencast, you really don't get a good sense of how wide this is. It is 800 wide, but I'm going to imagine that, of course, I would have a bunch of content on here, and the image itself, unless it truly is a main part of the page, just should not overwhelm the content. So believing that this is a good size, I'm going to work with this. Now, notice that I have physically constrained it to a much smaller dis dimension, but that has done nothing to change its overall file size, which is still coming in at 1.4 megs. So in order to change the overall file size, there's multiple ways I can do it. One, of course, is I could jump out into other programs such as Photoshop or Fireworks and optimize it there. 
But Dreamweaver has some of that built right in. Now, on my version of Dreamweaver, I've got a, a Photoshop option right here, and that's because Dreamweaver and Photoshop are produced by the same company, and when I have both installed, one is aware of the other. However, if you don't have Photoshop, that's fine. You may not have it. In earlier versions of Dreamweaver, this icon actually looked a little bit different. It had the look of a large C-clamp um, that would uh, be blue in many of those versions. So slightly different icon, but they all do the same thing. If I hover on top of it, it says Edit Image Settings. That's the one I want to go for. And again, this is built into Dreamweaver. I'm going to go ahead and click on that one time. Now here within this particular portion of Dreamweaver, I'm going to move this over, Notice that the first thing I can see is that I could change the file type should I want to. Again, lots of technical pieces behind this in terms of why I would choose a JPEG over a GIF over a ping. But for my understanding here, or for your understanding here, the best type of file for this particular image is a JPEG because it is a photo. Notice here immediately that there has been a significant reduction in overall size, 14 kilobytes coming in at two seconds as a download. The reason why it's radically changed in terms of that download size is because I've physically constrained it. So Dreamweaver is telling me that if I did nothing else to this image but leave it at this constrained size and just optimized it right here, I immediately would drop this from 1.4 megabytes to 14 kilobytes. Now I can also come over here to the word file and see that indeed it's checked to constrain and that it is 212 pixels wide by 169 high. I can also tell that over here within the property inspector of Dreamweaver down here as I was resizing the image I could see how wide and high it was there as well. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. Um, you know dropping this image right down to 14 kilobytes is a very very good savings to have done right away. I'm going to go ahead and click on Save. Now notice one thing here, my Dreamweaver is a little funny in the fact that it doesn't automatically update these file sizes. Sometimes if I close out, reopen it, everything's good, I know what size it is, but one of the things to note is that it never hurts to go into that compression tool and go ahead and optimize your image. So even if you're not sure whether Dreamweaver is reading those file sizes correctly or not, you should always take it through that little compression routine. Now one other thing I can do in terms of compression on this particular image, Clicking on it one time, I'm going to go ahead and go back into my optimization era area. I'm going to go ahead and move it to the side a little bit just to kind of keep a peek out on not only the image within the tool, but the image back here on the web page. Because the other thing I can do is I can actually change its overall quality. Now this is where you have to balance between the quality of the visual image overall versus the file size. Quite frankly, a 14 kilobyte file is not terrible and in fact could certainly be lived with, but perhaps I am planning on putting lots more images on here and I want to kind of save everything I can. One of the things I could do here is I could go ahead and start reducing the quality of the image. Now you can start to see that the quality kind of gets softer and fuzzier here, but you know in terms of looking at it from a judgment standpoint, I don't see a huge difference between my original, which is what this was approximately, and this. If I run this guy all the way down, it gets uh, kind of fuzzier yet. And unfortunately, the, the preview here doesn't do a great job at showing me what that's going to look like. But I can go ahead and run my quality down and go ahead and click on OK. Before I do that, notice that because I've run my quality down to 54%, that my image size now has shrunk to roughly 8K. So a significant savings yet again. I'm going and click on OK for that. And overall, I don't feel as if I lost a huge amount of quality on that. The thing you do need to know is that once you have compressed an image down, then you cannot go backwards. You cannot then resize this back to its original shape and expect the same clarity and resolution. In fact, you would very quickly run out of that clarity and resolution because um, the file itself has been significantly reduced. Even by making it this bigger, much bigger, you can immediately start to see it pixelating. And that beca is because the original file size